until last night, pretty much, when shit hit the fan again. But we're in California now, and I want to definitely insert some clips because it is beautiful. We're on the I-5 headed north, um, and I've never been to this part of California before, and it's very beautiful. But I'll insert some of the clips of what we've been driving past. But basically last night we arrived with an empty, well Kyle arrived, I was asleep, to our location, and he had to wait 40 minutes at the gate to get in. He finally got in, and then he couldn't find his trailer. It wasn't in the spot that they had told him it was going to be at. So he's looking around and around, and he goes to the office, and they're trying to find where this trailer is, and eventually they find that it's backed into this spot where, so I guess they're so full at that location that they have sets of three, so like a trailer, and then a trailer in the middle, and then another trailer. So to get to his trailer, to our trailer, he had to have a yard dog move a trailer out and then pull the trailer out for us because it was so tight. But he goes back there, he finds the trailer after like an hour of looking with the help from the manager of the shipper and just out there wandering around. And so he finds the trailer. To his pleasant surprise, they had absolutely demolished the electrical connection. They had backed the trailer into the electrical and this had happened on multiple trailers. There were a lot of trailers with just absolutely fucked up electrical connections because they just backed the trailer all the way till it hits the other one. He called electrical, or he called, <laughs> he, he called maintenance and ended up waiting like, I think we waited probably seven hours because we keep having shit like that happen in the middle of the night. It just takes forever for anyone to come. So we're waiting for maintenance. So we've been, he's been at the shipper for like two hours already trying to find the trailer and then waiting at the gate. So he finally gets in and finds the trailer. Electrical's broken. So he talks to the security gate there and he's like, can we just stay until maintenance arrives? And everyone there says yes. So he pulls us into this little spot and we go to, and he goes to sleep because what else are we going to do? So we're asleep and then someone starts pounding on our door relentlessly, like just over and over and over again. And they'll stop for like two seconds and they start pounding on the door again. And so now it was my turn to be on shift and he had explained to me what had happened. So I knew that we were just waiting on maintenance and stuff like that. So I like get up and I'm trying to find my clothes and I yell one sec, but they keep pounding on the door and I cannot find my clothes. So I just put on his jacket and I roll, I pull back the curtain, I roll down the window and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, this girl's like, you can't sleep here. This isn't a sleeping place. You can't stay here overnight. And I was like, they told us we could stay here while we waited for maintenance to come fix the trailer. And she was like, no, you can't stay. You need to leave. Here's your exit ticket. And I was like, oh my God. And then Kyle obviously had woken up also. So he was like, there's Walmart uh, less than a mile away from here. So we just bobtailed over to the Walmart and spent the rest of the night there. And then I woke up at about seven o'clock and it said that maintenance was gonna be over there. So I headed over there and we finally, we lost the trailer again because it's just ba it's just backed with like a hundred other trailers and it's in the middle of this row. So we can't really even see it. We find the trailer, get a yard goat to pull both the trailers out. Maintenance fixes it and then we leave. So that was our day <laughs> today. been pretty lucky in that we've had everything that we've needed 
some essentials that I have needed are kind of more for me personally and will kind of be more related to women who are trucking, but um, a roll of toilet paper because I have found, especially team driving, that sometimes we'll swap at locations that don't have a bathroom, but I have to go to the bathroom because I've just woken up. So bring toilet paper um, or wipes or napkins or something if that's what you need, because um, that's a necessity for me. And then another essential is baby wipes because sometimes you don't get to shower every day and it's horrible, but baby wipes will do a better job than nothing. And it's probably super gross, but that's kind of just the reality of how it happens sometimes. So um, another essential is our little vacuum. We have like a $50 Shark handheld car mini vacuum that we got so we can keep the truck clean because it gets dirty in here so fast. We have alcohol wipes that we picked up at an OC also. They're, they were just sitting on the counter, a bunch of them, but if you need some, just go into an OC and ask. So that way we can keep things like somewhat clean as best as possible. Another essential for us is our coffee maker. I do enjoy coffee quite a bit. In fact, I had a headache today because I didn't drink any coffee and I think it was a caffeine withdrawal, but I only have normally like three cups a day like three cups of water, it's three cups of coffee, whatever. So um, we have a coffee maker in the back if you watched our truck tour. It was like 35 bucks from Walmart and we just Velcroed it to our little table and it is a lifesaver because we're making a pot of coffee every 12 hours once one of us wakes up and then we don't have to buy it at the truck stop and the uh, truck stop coffee is probably shitty. I've never had it and I don't want to. Shower shoes, yeah, you're gonna wanna bring your own shower shoes and honestly bring your own towels, especially if you're team driving. Because if you go in and you're in a, if you're team driving with your spouse or your partner or your significant other, you'll likely be showering together. Um, at least that's how Kyle and I do it. And they will only give you one set of towels. And by set, I mean one washcloth, one ground towel, like a mat, and one body towel. So we just use we use like the washcloth to dry our shower shoes and we use the mat by the sink and then we use the body rug by the shower so we can take our shower shoes off and not be walking on the, the tile. We're just walking on the towel. And then we have our own towels which we know we've washed and are clean. So that's definitely an essential. And then just make sure you have backup food and water. You never know when you could get stuck for 24 hours or even longer. Like when we were stuck in Cheyenne for, we were stuck in Cheyenne for a significant amount of time with the wind problem because we were basically empty. So uh, we have at any given time at least, at least two cases of water bottles. We have water jugs and we have like canned soup, uh, ramen noodles, just basic cold food storage things, just in case. But you'll find out pretty fast, this is what I would recommend, you'll find out really fast what you need to have out here for yourself personally and working. So when you do your first run right out of the Schneider Cat program, start making a list because you're going to say, oh, I wish I had this or oh, I wish I had that. But when you get home for two days, you're probably not going to remember everything that you said. So just make a list and write down what you need. Like we have a going list right now of things that we need to get when we go home. Um, like shorts, I don't have shorts because it's been so cold and we trained in Indiana, but it's like, it was 75 degrees when we went through Texas and I was all melting. So we're gonna get some warmer clothes in the truck, just random things like that. Anyway, make a list so that way you know what you need to get. And speaking again of being a female trucker, the next question is how long do you have for personal hygiene? It's one of my fears trucking, but I won't have enough time for myself to pamper. So generally Kyle and I spend from the time we leave our truck to the time we walk back after a shower about an hour. Now you're really only supposed to take 30 minutes but that's like 30 minutes a person. We're both showering so it equals like an, 30 minutes a person for a shower. And um, honestly, I don't really care about bending the rules about having a 30 minute shower, whatever, you know? That being said, um, pampering myself it has never really been a priority out here at least not yet now I plan on bringing like my hair straightener when we come out this next round because I'm sick of my hair being all curly and crazy and the hair straightener helps me tame it um, because
because when you go off duty, when you end your shift, you have 12 hours, right? So 12 hours on, 12 hours off, and that's a long time. You're not gonna be sleeping that whole 12 hours. So you'll, you've got time to you know, do that in the back of the truck. As far as doing that in the shower area, probably not so much. I'm sure people do it. I'm sure women do it, I don't. I've also never really worn makeup. I very rarely wear any, any makeup. So it's not like I'm doing that in the morning or taking it off at night. Um, but when I get home is really when I pamper myself. So I'll do my, I'll paint my toenails when I go home and I'll take a nice luxurious exfoliating shower when I get home. So that's kind of what I look forward to when I get home. I'm sure you could make that a priority for yourself if you wanted to, because again, you have 12 hours off of your shift, but for me, it's just not something important or something I care to do. So I don't know if that answers your question, but that's kind of where I'm at. But again, like I said, sometimes we don't even have the ability to shower every 24 hours. It just doesn't line up. Um, so our priority, honestly, is just trying to shower every day. And if we get away with that, then we're happy campers. What's been your biggest obstacle team truck driving? And again, this is kind of catered, catered towards people who are driving with their significant other. In the beginning, uh, Kyle and I were riding really hard. Um, we basically just became coworkers for like a week and we kind of forgot that we were like actively dating each other. So that was the first thing that we had to realize is like, we're not a normal team trucking partnership in the sense that we love each other, right? So we just had to realize that we would actively need to make sure that we made time to be with each other. So instead of, you know, sleeping your whole 12 hour shift or staying in the back your whole 12 hour shift, going out and being with each other for maybe like one or two hours or you know, helping each other back so you can spend a little time together, just the little things to make sure that you still like remember that this is your significant other and it's who you're dating, whatever, if that makes sense. So that was our first problem is don't push too hard. And then going along with that, um, because we were running ourselves so ragged, we were basically co-workers, we weren't really enjoying ourselves. Part of that was also just learning what the hell we were doing out here because being OTR was very different from being in training and being on the dedicated run with, with our TE. And then the other thing to keep in mind, and I had no idea about this when I first got into this career, is it's not actually really a career. It's not a career and it's not a job. It's literally a lifestyle. Like trucking is our life. And I had failed to understand that that was going to be the case before we started this whole thing and so just know that you are about to change your entire the way you live your life if you're going OTR. Is it difficult team driving with the truck always moving and having a pet? Not really. The nice thing about kind of this trucking thing is that the truck isn't literally always moving so we stop to fuel, we stop to scale, we stop for our 30 minute breaks so there's always excuse me, the opportunity for us to take Lucy out to go to the bathroom. She's adjusted very well to being on the road. Um, she does a super good job and we just bring her in the truck stops with us also and she's super good and uh, when we shower she just stays in here. If we you know, run into a Walmart she just stays inside and she does a really good job. So anytime one of us gets out, like if I'm doing my pre-trip or if he's scaling or if I'm fueling or if he has to run into the truck stop and go to the bathroom, whatever. We'll just take Lucy so she can go to the bathroom and get a little walk, but overall it hasn't been a problem at all. And then lastly, is there any tips you have in general for new truck drivers? I kind of already gave a little bit of advice, but, and keep in mind, we have probably only been driving OTR for like three or four weeks now. The most important thing is take your time, go slow, don't let anybody rush you. You're the captain of your own ship, and I've said this in my other videos as well. Anything that happens to you, whether someone tells you to do it or not, is on you. So just make sure you're taking your time with your pre-trip and you know when you're sliding your tandems and when you're backing up to a new trailer, all of that responsibility falls on you. So just be super careful and then um, enjoy yourself. Like I said, it was really hard for us the first week we were out here and there's still hard days, but this is a really freeing job for me. 
I was previously working in a law office. I worked there for six months. Uh, I just sat in a cubicle all day and had clients of the law firm bitch at me all day. And I was fighting with insurance adjusters for money and it sucked. So now I'm out here and our DBO obviously is who we report to and we report to operations, but generally speaking, we're pretty much our own bosses. We can stop whenever we want for a break. If we need to take a nap, we can take a nap. If we want to stop for food, we can stop for food. Um, we try and fuel where they tell us to because that factors into our bonus, but we can take a different route than what's recommended for us if we know that it's safe and legal. So all of that being said, we're just out here on the road together enjoying our time. There's a lot of shit that we have to put up with, but even with the shit you have to put up with, it's it, it's it been really good. So enjoy your time out here. It's really free. It's really awesome. Cocktails, cute. If you are OTR, um, you get to travel, which is awesome. That's why I mainly wanted to do this. So Kyle and I could be together and I wanted to travel. And we've already been through like multiple states I've never been to before. And we get to experience it together, which is super cool. And there's not a lot of jobs like this, which allows you to travel with your significant other, make money, and there's no one, there's no immediate manager being the boss of you, if that makes sense. If you made it this far into the video, you're a trooper. If you are a trucker, new or um, if you're a veteran, if you have any advice for new truckers, especially team truckers or even solo drivers, leave a comment down below. I would love any advice you can give us. Um, but thanks for watching the video. If you did enjoy the content, give it a thumbs up. That really shows me that you're enjoying the content that I'm making. And thanks for your patience while I got out this new video and hopefully I'll have another vlog out soon. And if you have other video requests also, um, leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. We're gonna be the next Riding with Dave channel. I don't know if any of you guys, you probably do, you probably do watch his channel, but his channel is pretty awesome, so look out. <laughs> Dave, we're coming for you.